So we've arrived. Look at this. Navigational complexities. Star Trek Resurgence. Ooh, it's been good so far. Bit slow, though, in some areas. Not a lot of gameplay. Mr. Diaz, I understand you have already discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock? I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments. But I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with his shuttle as if it were somehow transubstantiated through its association with him. Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. I am not the chief engineer of this shuttlecraft. When you look at it logically, yes, it is just a shuttle. No different than any of the others. There is plenty that is different about it, and that is what you are to investigate. But please limit your findings to observable scientific phenomena. We'll try to restrain ourselves. Then I will leave you to it. Make note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry He's on. smiling. Got that wrong, didn't he? One nice thing about Vulcans. Chobok is the only person who didn't look at this and treat me like I was something to pity. Doc says I should get used to it. Doesn't mean I want to be reminded of it every minute of the day. Hey, you won't get pity from me. I think it makes you look tough. As tough as you really are, that is. And that makes you sound pretty smart. I might need you to save me for myself next time, though. <laughs> Come on. Let's get to the bottom of this. Dun dun dun. There's that panel again. Ready to go? All set. Let's run the diagnostic. Okie dokie then. Running diagnostics. Begin the diagnostic. Woohoo! Wavy mousey pointy clicky. So. I know about your talk with Miranda. You. You do? She sent me a priority one dispatch right after your conversation. I'm happy for you. Both of you. <sighs> Thanks. But, I'm only going to tell you this once. Don't screw this up. Because I would be very unhappy if you tried this out and then, I don't know, six weeks or six days later I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you. All because you're not on speaking terms. That just isn't gonna work for me. And I know you'll respect that. Are you upset? <laughs> Not on your life, Diaz. But you need to be careful. I like my friends and I like our group. I don't want to lose that. Is that thing done? Yeah, yeah it's wrapping up. Let's see. The relays along the primary EPS are blown. The backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. Yeah, data recorders. Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? Warnings. Warp field, warp field inversion came inverted suddenly. I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow, they're lucky the shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. How can the computer panic? Subspace variance out of tolerance. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. If it was caused by a system failure. None of this caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Yes, ma'am. And we're moving on. 
Oh, yeah. So here, they take a moment to get their bearings and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There. That's the relays blowing. And look, there's another warp system alert. Okay, so here we go then. Now they're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance or Warp inversion. Bird of prey. Finally, there's a complete warp cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. You want to check the warp coils? It's going to be a cloak array? ship. Come on. I'll check the other. Let's not overcomplicate this. One of these systems is likely broken. Navigation. I'll check the navigation array. All right, let's go in. <clears throat> Your tricorder can record and analyze data, though it will reveal the end scene. Okay, uh, let's get going in. Woo! There you are, look, that's uh, okay. What's she doing? Nothing. <laughs> okay, two. Get round you. What else can we see? Use Q and E to switch between the deep scan. Okay. No anomalies detected. Ooh, anomaly targeted. Cool. There we are. Isolinear fields. Okay. Lovely. Brilliant. Yes. Very good. There's no biologics on it. Okay. Completed the scan. Navigation array checks out, so it must be a coil. Except it's not. Checked and double checked. Well, the readings don't lie. Here comes the security detail for the way team. Hey. <laughs> We're escorting the negotiating team to the surface as soon as they come down from the bridge. I don't want to interrupt some important work. I was just hoping to see you before I go. Just go. The captain and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. Well, we can't let the brass catch us slacking on the job. Just play along. This is a Mark IV outboard diagnostic panel used for troubleshooting shuttles and other medium-sized transport vehicles. Some people prefer the Mark V because it's one better, but the Mark IV is still one better than the Mark III. <laughs> oh, that all sounds very technical. He's an old smoothie. Aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? And you're the phaser jockeys we always beat in Parisi squares, right? All aboard for Hotari. That another one of the captain's railroad things? <laughs> Gotta be. I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole uh, steam engines were the warp drives of their day part. Catch y'all later. Engage. You don't want to miss your train. I do have to go. Yes. Well, go on then. Not gonna lie, I'd rather not leave right now. More important things on my mind. I bet. Go on, do your job. I'll be right here waiting for you when you get back. You better be. Keep it professional. Be seeing you. Hmm. Won't see you through a week, see you through a window. Good grief, you don't need that. 
If you could float back down to reality, we still have a ways to go. All right, where were we? So, the warp coils in the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. You wanna take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands on maintenance. I like it. Okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run through the shuttle's logs again. Oh, here we go. Running now. All right, come on in. Same. Warp field inversion and the cascade failure. However, the Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace variance. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if the subspace variance was a momentary occurrence? That's a possibility, and it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Ripples. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Oh my god. Resuming simulation. Error in warp field calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. That right there. Take the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why did the warp field calculation fail? Warp field pressure returned non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. And that doesn't help. Wait, what if we use a different ship? Put the Resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should work just fine. Unless... Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the Resolute. Resolute simulated. Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. Okay, here we go. Field intensity, warp 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapsed. Subspace variance is out of tolerance. Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. what -o? The same moment when the shuttle failed to warp, so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. The Resolute will not sustain warp. We can't leave Hotari space. Dun dun dun!